Coming in at number 10, Charles will become king. The throne is never left unattended. In the event of the queen's death, Charles will automatically become the king. He will be proclaimed King Charles III the day after his mother's death in a ceremony at St James's Palace. He will swear to protect the church and then he will head off on an immediate tour of the UK, visiting Edinburgh, Cardiff and Belfast. He will then meet with the leaders of the devolved governments. As Charles is sworn in, the UK will now know a new queen, Queen Camilla, his wife. There are likely to be mixed emotions about this. Coming in at number 9 is mass hysteria. I don't think we quite realise how old the queen is. Like She lived through Hitler, the Cuban Missile Crisis, JFK, Nixon, basically everything and she's still here. Most people have never even known life without the queen and don't even know a world where she's not there, like me included. I can't even think of a world that she's not in. She's always been alive as long as I have. Honestly, the public will be an absolute mess. She is so loved, she's been alive for so bloody long that every single generation will feel it no matter how old you are. When Princess Diana and the Queen Mother died, the public reaction was unparalleled. When Princess Diana died, tens of thousands of people came to lay flowers at the palace, more than a million bouquets were left, and a memorial appeal raised 20 million pounds. People were out there waiting 10 hours or more just to sign the memorial books. So imagine what kind of chaos and mass hysteria would break loose if the queen died. It will just be a minute of silence at football games, her dying is a literal punch to the gut of the nation's psyche. <laughs> But I'm not an English teacher. <laughs> She's the only British monarch to have celebrated her sapphire jubilee, which is 65 years on the throne. If she was alive for three more years, she'd make it to the platinum jubilee. It's not just a political figure dying, you guys. It's like someone close to you dying. You can't have it. You can't have it. She can't die. At number eight, we have George, Charlotte, and Louis. Yes, the three beautiful children of Prince William and Kate Middleton, who have also been the source of many internet memes throughout their short but very rich lives. Honestly, losing a great grand parent is horrible for anyone whether you are particularly close to them or not. When the Queen of England happens to be your great grandma, things are a bit different, you know, like she just raised the bar of great grandmas quite high. Either way, we all know what grandmas do, they overfeed us, tell us stories from the day of yore that we pretend to be interested in, and interestingly, they always smell like baby powder. Is that just me? I just feel like they all do. The three have probably bonded with their royal great grandma loads, which makes losing her awful. They'll most likely stop being overfed after her death and so they'll no longer have those chubby cheeks and since she herself is a cheeky bugger but the kids' own parents are quite serious, that cheekiness will also die along with her. So really, when she dies, the kids will just become skinny, boring royal kids that no one will be interested in. Filling our number 7 slot is Archie. We've done Prince Harry and Kate's kids and now we move on to Archie Harrison Mountbatten Windsor, the son of Prince Harry and Hollywood royalty Meghan Markle. Now since Archie was only born a few months ago, he's currently a small potato that has absolutely no idea who he is, what his birth means, the fact he's royal and rich, and the fact his entire life will be infinitely better than mine. Great. Now hypothetically, say the queen dies soon, like before his third or fourth birthday, he's not gonna remember her, let's be real. He's not gonna know who the hell she was, he won't even remember his life till he's like five at least. Like does anyone remember their life before they were five or six? Cause I don't. <laughs> I just realised, I just realised even if she dies before he's four, I would have known Queen Elizabeth better than him and I'm not even related to her. But with that will come the bullying. You see, when Archie grows up, he won't be able to flex on all these hoes about his great grandma because let's Face it, he didn't know her. Charlotte, George, and Louis will get all the clout for knowing her, being her favourites and whatnot, but where does that leave Archie? Getting bullied by all the other rich kids, that's where. You snooze, you lose Archie, sorry. Now at number 6 is the economy. Let's face it, when the Queen dies, things are really gonna go up for a while. For at least two weeks after she dies, with the whole funeral and new monarch coming to ascension, Britain will literally stop. They're estimated to lose billions in earnings because banks and the London Stock Exchange will close. The coronation and funeral will obviously become national holidays, which will lose Britain anywhere from 1.2 billion to 6 billion pounds. That is a lot of money you guys, and since basically every shop will close down for at least a day or two, the country will actually just be at a standstill for a while on that. In another itself is damn scary. Coming in at number 5 are memes. Honestly some of the best memes I've seen on the internet right now are of Queen Elizabeth, like the one where she's sitting there in the pink looking all 
and like cute and small. That is that is for sure one of my favorites. Another one of her wearing that khaki bonnet over her headscarf and looking like she's having an absolute nightmare of a time. Have you seen that? I feel like everyone's seen that meme. It's so funny, and it's honestly just me 24/7. Like that is my mood 24/7. Queen Elizabeth in that bonnet. Just just not happy to be here. Just have to be here anyway. But my absolute favorite one is the one where she's got this like bougie white coat around her and she has the crown and a bunch of diamonds and she's just smiling into your soul like she's just eating your whole family. Like I didn't even know the queen could look like a cannibal but apparently she can in this photo. Also, I mean, God save the queen honestly and save our meme game. At number four is the Commonwealth. Now as the sovereign of all 16 Commonwealth realms, Queen Elizabeth II is essentially their head of state even though they are all independent and have their own prime ministers and so forth. It's said that when the queen dies, Prince Charles will take the throne and most likely reinforce his support to all the Commonwealth realms. Well, that's what he's expected to do, but what if he doesn't? What if he becomes power hungry because he's been waiting to be king for so long that he brings back the British Empire and wants to be the king of all the realms? As in, not just a distant king that offers troops and support here and there, no no, I'm talking a dictator. It's my way or the highway sort of king. So that's Britain and Ireland, Australia, New Zealand, Canada and a lot of islands in the Caribbean. All of which would be dictated by Prince Charles and God knows what he'd do once the Queen is offed. All of which would be dictated by Prince Charles and God knows what he'd do once the Queen is offed. Also can we just talk a second about the fact that it's called Commonwealth Realms? Like what is this? Are we in like the archaic times of realms? Like come on people, no. Filling our number 3 slot is the sibling bloodbath. So once the Queen dies and if Prince Charles doesn't abdicate the throne then all the royal heirs move up a line. The next after Prince Charles would obviously be Prince William, then his son George, then Charlotte, then Louis. But I mean honestly this family has some pretty healthy genes and they seem to live at least a century long. I mean Queen Elizabeth the first was 101 years old when she died, Prince Philip will be 102 years and the current queen is catching up as well. Now do you think these young kids are just gonna patiently wait for all these people to die before they can take the throne? Yeah they are. Because as people start dying and dropping like flies the only real competition will be between the kids and Charlotte and Louis will most likely not go down without a fight. They'll most likely try and off George for the throne like they did in the old days and since George is the first born he's probably gonna be you know like bred to rule. You know he's gonna be that righteous courageous can do no wrong king so I feel like you won't even see his demise coming so Charlotte and Louis could get him pretty easily I feel. And I mean I can only hope Louis doesn't go further and kill Charlotte as well but I mean we don't know. We don't know what's going through that little boy's head. Now at number two is Prince William. So compared to Prince Harry, Prince William is more of a royal poster boy let's say. Yeah he had his fun wild days back in the day when he was in university and after when him and Kate would break up for a little while but compared to Harry it was pretty tame so we just let it slide. But six months ago though there were rumours that William cheated on Kate with their friend Rose the Marchioness of Chumley. Even Giles Corrin, a well connected member of the media who's been reporting on the royals for years apparently confirmed he knew about the affair and that everyone did as well. On another boys holiday skiing trip William was photographed dancing with a woman that was clearly not Kate since she was at the palace taking care of the kids. So hopefully the death of his grandma will jolt him back to reality and make him loyal. Men and loyalty? That's scary. I said what I said. And finally at number one is the joke and this one isn't as much scary as it is me hoping this will be true. Now as I previously mentioned this specific royal family really does live long. They have long lives like century long lives. In touch wood I mean I hope they continue to but also please Please let me in on your secrets, like what the hell I want to live that long too. But either way I'm theorizing that when Queen Elizabeth dies, she won't actually die. She'll somehow be preserved or given some immortality elixir that will keep her going. Or, or get this, perhaps that's going to be the time they finally tell us that Princess Diana hasn't really been dead this whole time, she's just been hiding with her lover and now she's back. No, 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 not even just Diana, think even the Queen Mother. Imagine the day Queen Elizabeth dies, the headline the next day is just a picture of these three powerful women women alive and better than ever and the, he the headline's gonna be like we're back Scary, but I'd pay to see it. Coming in at number 10, Abdul Halim of Kedar will become the longest reigning monarch. Currently Queen Elizabeth II is the longest living and reigning monarch, having been on the throne since 1952, so that's over 65 years. She became the longest surviving after King Rama IX of Thailand passed away in 2016. Following Queen Elizabeth, the second oldest living monarch is Abdul Halim of Kedar, an area in Malaysia. Coming in at number 9, the Prime Minister and the Commonwealth will be informed. Immediately after the Queen's death, the Prime Minister
Minister of the UK will be informed. She or he will then inform the 15 governments outside of the UK where the Queen is head of state. Then the 36 other Commonwealth nations for which the Queen is a figurehead will be informed. Commonwealth countries include Australia, Canada and New Zealand. Coming in at number 8, the news will go out to the public. The Queen's death will undoubtedly make global headlines. News is likely to spread pretty fast and will officially come in two forms. The royal family's official press, Clarence House, will provide a press release to all news sources. Traditionally, the BBC is the first to hear, although it's unlikely that they will receive such a benefit in modern times. Meanwhile, at Buckingham Palace, a footman dressed in black will put up a black edged notice on the palace gates. The royal family website will be turned black, and news reporters will also wear black on camera. Of course, all news publications in existence will have their Queen eulogy on file and will have practiced for this exact scenario. It's just good journalism. Radios will change their regular programming, broadcasting services, and more frequent news updates. The BBC, the UK's public broadcaster, will not run any comedy on their main channel, and they will change their scheduling to accommodate breaking news. BBC radios will play only appropriate music, and news will be read every 15 minutes. Coming in at number 7, we have Parliament will be recalled immediately following the death. That's right, immediately following the death of a monarch, Parliament will be recalled, so this is both the House of Lords and the House of Commons. If the Parliament is on recess, MPs will be expected to make their way back to London. If the Prime Minister is not in London, they will also be expected to return as a matter of urgency. It's likely that Parliaments in other Commonwealth countries will meet too. Coming in at number 6, there will be 12 days of national mourning in the UK. The Queen's death will trigger 12 days of mourning in the UK, as well as other likely mourning periods in Commonwealth countries. On the day of her death, flags will fly at half mast, and a lot of businesses will send their employees home. The royal parks will ban all games, and some international and national sports may be called off. For those that aren't, the national anthem will be sung at each match. The Queen's funeral will take place nine days after her death, and in the mourning period, outpourings of tributes are likely to be made. The stock market will be closed on the day of the funeral, and perhaps for more days in the mourning period. Her funeral will be a national holiday in the UK, and may also be a holiday holiday in other Commonwealth countries. So this brings us to the funeral itself, coming in at number 5. If the Queen dies abroad or elsewhere in the UK, there are transportation plans in place. Ultimately, she will be taken first to Buckingham Palace, then she will be taken to Westminster Hall, where she will lie in state until her funeral. As she lays in state, the public will be able to pay their respects, with huge footfall expected. The funeral will take place at 11am at Westminster Abbey, with around 2,000 invited guests inside. This will include officials from across the world. Her body will be taken to Windsor Palace later that day. As her coffin travels by road, a lot of people are expected to turn out to watch it go by. Next up at number 4, she will be buried in a vault at Windsor Castle. The royal household will travel ahead to Windsor Castle, and they will have a private ceremony as the Queen's body is descended into the royal vault. Coming in at number 3, money would change. Somewhere along the 10 day timeline of events surrounding the Queen's death, the order for new money to be issued will come in the UK and all Commonwealth countries that use the British monarch on their cash. Eventually coins and notes with the Queen's face will be replaced with that of King Charles III. Now this next point is pure speculation, but a lot of people are suggesting it could happen. If it did, it would be the most dramatic event. That's right, coming in at number 2, we have the possible breakup of the Commonwealth. Australia's Prime Minister and opposition leader both want the country to be a republic. If Australia did become a republic, it is possible that New Zealand, Canada, Bermuda and Barbados and the rest of the Commonwealth countries may wish to follow suit. It's also quite likely soon after that Charles will tour the Commonwealth to try and consolidate his position. Finally, coming in at number 1, we would have a period of reflection. After her death, there will come a moment of national and international reflection. Queen Elizabeth II has seen much change change over her reign, and sadly, not all of it has been good. From a country with an empire to none at all. From a country number one on the global stage to one of decline in national power. Britain's position is not the same as it once was. The Queen has lived through a lot, and I hope that her reign continues to see international peace and that she doesn't have to witness the breakup of the United Kingdom. Whatever anyone's thoughts on the Queen, she's been a strong woman and a unifying force for a country that finds itself less unified by the day. Starting us off at number 10 is Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. So as we all know, Prince Philip
Philip and Queen Elizabeth have been happily married since 1947. That's nearly 50 years, like I don't want to overstep, but I reckon he's pretty attached to her. So if she died, I'm pretty sure Prince Philip would legitimately die of stress. Firstly, the man is already 98, so he's already, you know, just teetering on the edge of expiration. So if you couple his age with losing the love of his life, that's just a very disastrous match, really. I feel like for the longevity of Prince Philip's life, Queen Elizabeth really just has to hang in there and keep it together. Because the losing her will be pretty bad for the public, but losing Philip too? Nah, can't eat him. We can't have that. Coming in at number 9, world leaders will send in their condolences. As part of the immediate aftermath, world leaders would be quick to send their condolences to the mourning United Kingdom. They'll also want to welcome in the new king, with her eldest son Charles set to take the throne. Many will praise her in their eulogising, and some country landmarks may even change their colours in condolence. British flags will be flown at half mast throughout the mourning period. Coming in at number 8, there will be a wall of flowers at every palace. When any member of the royal family dies, the response from the monarchists in the UK and abroad is overwhelming. When Princess Diana died, flowers lined the streets of London. Buckingham Palace and Kensington Palace were awash with floral tributes, and this will be the case if Queen Elizabeth passes too. Many alive in the UK right now will have never experienced the death of a monarch, and the response is hard to predict, but is set to be huge. Coming in at number 7, there will be commemorative memorabilia, and old coins and relics will become very valuable. The Queen's death will spark commemorative postage stamps, crockery, and coins galore. On top of that, old coins and memorabilia with her face on will soar in value. Any one pound notes? Hold on to them. Coins from her coronation year? You must look after them. Basically, anything from her silver and golden jubilees will see improved value, as will anything with her face on from her reign. Coming in at number 6, the British national anthem will change. Most of us in the UK and Commonwealth countries are familiar with singing God Save the Queen. However, after the Queen dies, this tradition of over 65 years will be gone, and people will return to singing God Save the King. Then the lyrics will not be changed for a very, very long time. Speaking of the King, coming in at number 5, the new King will tour the world. As it goes, the King will be Prince Charles, unless he makes any radical abdication decisions, but that would be unprecedented. Charles will become King Charles III and will immediately tour the UK. Then, after the dust settles, he'll be expected to tour the Commonwealth in order to consolidate his position. The title of monarch to the Commonwealth is not hereditary, so who knows what will happen there. On top of that, he will be expected to meet world leaders, such as the United States President and other the European leaders. So this brings us to number 4, there will be a shuffle in the lineup of succession. No longer the heir, Charles will become king. The first in line to the throne is William, his eldest son. Then second in line is William's son George. Basically everyone moves up one place. Of course when George eventually has children of his own, things will shift even more. So a really big one at number 3, the Church of England will be in question. The Queen prides herself on being the head of the Church of England and a keeper of the faith. However, it's unclear if her son Charles, a man who has attracted some scandal in his time, feels the same way. While the royal family publicly attends church, the world is constantly modernising and moving away from religion. Indeed, the modern world is also moving away from the notion of a monarchy. Charles will need to consider his position with the Church of England as carefully as he will need to self-evaluate the role of a king in a modern age. Coming into number 2, Queen Elizabeth will forever be remembered as the longest reigning queen. The Queen of England is already the longest surviving queen in history, living and dead, and it seems unlikely that anyone will Will ever take this title away from her after her death. Her father died and she became queen when she was just 25 years old, which is very young for a modern monarch. She then lived right on into her 90s. It's unlikely that these circumstances will ever be replicated for a young female. Finally, at number one, really, really sadly, but she could be the last ever Queen of England. I for one love the monarchy, but I am not the overpowering voice. A lot of people find it irrelevant and speculate that we'll be done with it in the not so distant future. At the moment, there are no females likely to succeed the throne, and this will be consolidated if Prince George has a boy when he grows up. Although he is just turning four years old, so give the guy some chance. Even if he does have a female child with no sons, by the time her succession comes around, there could be no monarchy left. This is all the more reason to celebrate Queen Elizabeth II now, while we still have her. 